Happy New Year, everyone. It's January 2019, and in the spirit of continuing improvement and lifelong learning, one of my New Year's resolutions is to add a rating. For that reason, I traveled to Mason City in Northern Iowa recently to seek twin engine training from Doug Rosendahl, a highly experienced instructor, pilot examiner, and airshow pilot. In this first video, Doug and I will take you through the drill, the immediate steps we go through after we lose one of the engines. In the second video, we'll cover VMC, the minimum control speed. Hey, hey Martin. How are you? Good. Did you have a good flight up from Cedar Rapids? Yeah, it was nice. So you want to do some multi-engine training, huh? I'm interested in uh, learning about this, yes. Well, I think we are here to do that. Cool. Let's get started. All right. Well, let's get to it. Yes. So I've uh, printed off some of the ACS here, the commercial pilot ACS. A lot of the tasks that we have to do, quite frankly, are the same task that you would do to get your commercial. And the reality is that a Baron is just a bonanza with two engines. So we're going to focus here today on the things that are really the heart and soul, the meat, if you will, of, uh, of the multi-engine rating. The things that are really different from exactly. the single. Yep. And I guess one of the things, points that I want to get across to you is that when you go to get a multi-engine rating, sadly, the training you get is designed to pass the test. The training in some areas is terribly inadequate. And so we're going to uh, dig a little deeper into what I believe, and I'm going to share with you some of my philosophies about flying multi-engine airplanes and why it's different and how important it is. And, and so that's what we're here to accomplish. Okay. One of the tasks we're going to have to do is feather and restart. So in the, this is the really the heart, the meat of the whole uh, multi-engine training. And to uh, feather an engine, there are, there are lots of different methods. There are, people teach it different ways. Um, but I'm pretty hard over about teaching um, a method called the drill. Uh, first of all, when, the engine, when an engine fails in a multi-engine airplane, uh, I don't care how experienced you are or how much you've done this, if it's totally unexpected, there is going to be a moment of shock, panic, terror, whatever you want to call uh -huh. it. Your body's going to take a big push of adrenaline, okay? Yes. And adrenaline will change your vision from 180 degrees to two inches at 2,000 yards. All right? It will light up your heart rate. It will slow down your brain. It, it will destroy your fine motor skills. And one of the things we have to do is train to get through that phase and go from being a, um, a monkey on drugs, the drug is adrenaline, to a functioning pilot that's actually flying the airplane. Mm -hmm. Because when we're flying this airplane that went from 100% performance to 30% performance, how finessefully we fly the airplane is gonna have a lot to do with how well it performs and what the likelihood of a successful outcome on 4,000 feet of uh, concrete somewhere is. Of course. And so we need strategies that get us through that, and they need to be regularly reinforced, recurrent training. And that's one of the things that you really have to commit to do if you're gonna fly a multi-engine airplane, is fly it professionally and commit to uh, recurrent training. And then when it happens unexpectedly and for real, you will still go through that phase where you take the big shot of adrenaline, you're gonna have some panic, some terror, whatever, but you have to have strategies and tools to get through that phase, get your vision from here back out to here, regain your fine motor skills and fly the airplane finessefully and accurately to a successful landing on an airport. And that's hard to train for because by definition in training you do expect it to happen and outside of training you don't. But here's the deal. Everybody says uh, we'll rise to the occasion. 
Okay, pilots do not rise to the occasion. They sink to the highest level of their recent training. And the longer ago that training was, the lower that level's going to be because flying is a perishable skill. That's a good way to put it, yeah. So let's talk about the drill. Engines can fail in numerous different phases of flight. Uh, they can fail on the runway before we've left the ground. Right. What would be your response if the engine failed on the runway? I would cut the power and uh, come to a stop on the runway. That's correct. If you have any sense that anything's going wrong on the runway, stay on the ground, stay on the ground. All right? It gets dicier once we've left the ground. I think I can say almost categorically in light twins, if you have an engine failure and the gear is down, we should pull the power back and land, okay? And if we have an engine failure and the gear is in transit, then we're going to do what's called the drill. And we are going to beat this into your brain at the same place in your brain where Mary had a little lamb exist. And the drill goes like this. Here, write this down. If we write, we remember better. Okay. Pitch for blue line, mixtures, props, throttles, flaps, gear, identify, verify, feather, mixture, engine failure checklist. So, the first thing you're gonna do when this engine, some people will say expletive, that's okay. That is relaxing, uh -huh. it's a little. You're going to push the nose forward, basically nose on the horizon initially. Because if you hold the climb attitude you have, your airspeed's gonna go away. Uh -huh. It's gonna decay rapidly. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna push the mixtures forward. Now, if it's right after takeoff, they should be forward. Okay? Yeah. Then you gotta come over to the propellers and you're gonna push the props full forward, uh -huh. slowly and deliberately. And then you're gonna push both throttles full forward. Mixtures, props, throttles. Okay. And we're gonna come down and again on a bearing there backwards. Flaps up, they should be up, but we're gonna verify that. Gear up, it should be in transit because if the gear's down, what were we gonna do? Land straight That's ahead. That's correct. All right, gear's up, identify, we're gonna slap the dead leg. To do that, we need to look at the ball and push, you know, so if the ball, if the airplane is uh, uh, yawing, uh, yawing, we're gonna push to bring the ball back towards the center. That's gonna be on the good engine side. So we're gonna slap the dead leg. That's the leg that's not pushing the rudder. That's correct. And the reason why we slap the dead leg is because then we're gonna retard. That's called identify. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna verify by pulling back the uh, same throttle, okay? And if it gets quiet, what are we gonna do? Push it up again because we so pulled the wrong, the wrong one. one back. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, but verify by pulling the throttle back, mm -hmm. okay? Because if you pull back on the wrong throttle, you can push it forward again. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna grab the same prop control and we're gonna pull it all the way back to the stop and that will begin the feather process. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we're gonna pull the mixture. Now we're gonna take a minute and fly the airplane. What are we gonna do with the bank? Five degrees towards the good engine. And we're gonna ease off on the rudder until we split the ball, half a ball, okay? And when we get everything stable and we're away from the ground, then we're gonna get out the engine failure checklist. And what we want is we want the ball to be pointed directly at the earth, right? And when we put yeah. five degrees of bank into the airplane, if the ball's in the center, it's pointed out, it's not pointed at the earth. So right. the reality is we want the ball, however much bank we have, yes. that many degrees of bank out of center. Mm -hmm. Because the ball should be pointed at the earth mm -hmm. at all times in coordinated flight. Yes. And that's how we determine that we're in coordinated flight is because the ball is pointed at the earth. Okay? So that's the drill. So we're gonna do the drill over and over and over again. And you'll be driving down the road in your car and you'll go, boom, engine failure, pitch for blue line, mixtures, props, throttles, flaps up, gear up, 
identify, verify, feather, mixture, engine failure checklist when we have time. Mm -hmm. And when you can do that slowly and deliberately, 100% of the time, when I go boom, engine failure, I expect you to recite that without drawing a breath, slowly and deliberately. Then we get in the airplane and you'll do exactly the same thing. Now, once you start that process, okay, you're in this panic. Oh my God, I lost an engine, what do I do? Oh yeah, the drill. Okay, when you do that, you take a little shot of endorphin. All right, that makes you feel good. Uh -huh. And your vision goes from here to here. And every step of the way that you get that right, your vision is going farther and farther and farther out. Now some will argue that if I'm right after takeoff, I don't need to fool around with the gear and the flaps. You know, I just uh, skip that. Well, I will guarantee you, if you don't make that part of your ritual every time, I can get you in a situation where you'll miss the gear and the flaps when they're in fact down. Mm -hmm. Have you ever taken off in the airplane and been three or four or five miles away from the airport and say, why is this airplane not going? I have, and the gear was down, yeah. Exactly. So ritual makes sense out of chaos, and an engine failure in a light twin unexpected is chaos. There is the cone of confusion, helmet fire, whatever word you choose to use when it actually happens, and if you can throw in a piston coming through a cowling or a little fire out there just for good measure, it's really, you know, chaos, and you need a ritual. And so this needs to be as deep in your brain as Mary had a little lamb, and you can do it over and over and over again accurately, slowly and deliberately. The slower and more deliberately that you do it, the faster and more accurately it will be completed. Because if you make a mistake here, and you actually do feather the wrong engine, it's game over. Uh -huh. You just became a glider, and the engine's not gonna come out of feather. How about if, if you're, say you're doing an instrument approach and you're configured for landing, would you still do all these steps or would you, con would you continue the landing? Well, I would go through those steps. If I'm in the marker inbound and the gear's down, I'm not gonna put it up. Mm -hmm. Because coming down a three degree glide slope, there are very few light twins that will not maintain a three degree glide slope with one engine feathered. So if the gear's down and flaps are at approach, or if, I'm, if I lost the engine 20 miles away and I'm coming in, my single engine approach is gonna be exactly the same as a two engine approach in every way possible. Mm -hmm. That means gear down at the marker, flaps approach at the marker. The only difference about a single engine ILS and a two engine ILS is we have zero tolerance for below the glide slope. Yes. You know. Okay, so maybe you say one dot high to one dot low, on a single engine approach, we want to be on the glide slope to one dot high. So just nothing below the glide slope single engine. Okay. And I typically fly blue line plus 10, you know, uh, is the speed that I would fly a single engine approach. So we've got some margin. So if you get distracted and you lose air speed, you know, you've got 10 knots to lose before you get on the wrong side of the drag bucket. That's the drill. So the next step is we're going to sit in a chair and we're going to do the drill over it because there's no point in getting in the airplane where you got all this extraneous noise and all of that until you have this firmly memorized in your brain and you can reliably and accurately execute it repeatedly. All right, so, you know, first glance you'd say this is kind of stupid, but you've been to Oshkosh, right? Mm-hmm. If you go to Oshkosh and you see the pros, if you go down to the show center and you watch them before they fly, they go out and walk through their maneuvers. Okay, what we're doing here, and they do that because it makes them perform better. So what we're gonna do here is we're not walking, we're sitting because we're gonna be sitting in our airplane. We're gonna, we're gonna but in theory, we're gonna walk through the maneuvers. Okay. And so, uh, first of all, I'm gonna talk you through it and then, you know, we'll work together to get you in the same place. So. We're at the end of the runway, we've done our run up, and we're ready to go, and uh, I'm flying the airplane, you're riding right now, and uh, so it's my takeoff, and so at the end of the runway, I'm gonna say, okay, we're departing runway 30 at Mason City. 
If I have a problem prior to gear retraction, we're going to close the throttles and land straight ahead. We've got plenty of runway. After gear retraction, it will be mixtures, props, throttles, flaps up, gear up, identify, verify, propeller, mixture, climb to a safe altitude, do the uh, engine failure checklist, and come back around here and land. And if you were my co-pilot, I would say any questions. But in a single pilot situation, once you're comfortable with the decision you've made, now you've done that, you've thought it through, you've got a plan, and the likelihood that you're gonna execute that plan is greater, okay? So now, I just set it, I'm sitting here, I take off, boom, full power, okay? Airspeed's alive, temps and pressure's good. Okay, so I just, somewhere around 50, 60 knots, I see that the airspeed's coming up. All the airspeed's alive, I'm gonna look at the oil pressure and the oil temperature. That's the last time I'm gonna look at that, make sure I've got oil pressure and the temperatures are not going through the mine. Temps and pressure's good, okay? Red line, and, and you're accelerating very quickly in a Baron. Even at gross weight, you're accelerating very quickly. Red line is VMC plus 10 rotate. And I'm gonna pull back on the yoke, just like you would in a Bonanza. Establish if uh, not, I mean, we've got more performance, but we want speed. So I'm just, I'm, it's gonna be a flatter, probably a similar rotation to what you would do in a Bonanza. Get the airplane climbing. Positive rate, two positive rates, the altimeter, and the VSI are showing positive. Gear up, and when I take my hands off the throttles to put the gear up, now I'm committed to fly. Mm -hmm. And five seconds later, boom, engine failure. Pitch for blue line, mixtures, props, throttles. Flaps are up, gears up, identify, verify. Now I got in a whole bunch full of, boot full of rudder. Verify, feather, mixture. Now I'm going to fine tune. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna fly very precisely. I'm gonna raise the dead, I'm gonna ease off on the rudder to split the ball, and I'm gonna hold heading and fly right at blue line, plus or minus a knot or two. Now I'm breathing again, now I'm relaxing, I've got altitude, I've got airspeed. Now all I gotta do is go back and fly a normal landing, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, are you ready? Let me ask you one question. The, the part of that that sounds very difficult to me, and maybe it isn't in real life, is the identify. You know, the other steps are more or less mechanical, but, but w will I know at that time? So you got uh, 300 horse pulling on one side mm -hmm. and a seven foot disc dragging on the other side. Mm -hmm. If you center the ball, if you do what you need to do with your feet to get the airplane pointed where it's going, it's going to be a lot of force on your leg. It's significant. There will be no question. All right, so let's start again at the end of the runway. Briefing. Right, we're departing runway 30 in Mason City. If we have a problem before gear retraction speed, uh, we cut the power and land straight ahead. If we have a problem after, we uh, uh, do mixture, prop, throttle, flaps up, gear up. Uh, then we identify, uh, we verify the throttle, feather, mixture. So get your hands in there. You're, you're reaching over here for the mixture and over here for the throttle. So it's mixture, props, throttles. Mixture, props, props. Throttles, throttles are in the middle. Yep. All right, that's very good. All right. That's, uh, that's the drill. You're going to work on that tonight. So you can say it slowly and deliberately, purposefully. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we'll go sit in the airplane and we'll do it, refresh it before we do it, and then we'll get in the airplane. Pitch for blue line. Mixtures, propellers, throttles, flaps up, gear up, identify, verify. Today we're gonna move from the ground phase that we, all the stuff we talked about, and uh, we're gonna go flying. This will be our introductory flight. The objective here is to, uh, first and foremost, get you comfortable in the airplane, and then we're gonna introduce 
all of the concepts that we talked about yesterday. All right, so we did it at the table. Now it's, and in the chair, now it's time to do it in the airplane where it's nice and quiet here. And that'll be the last step we go fly. So uh, let's start with the pre-takeoff briefing and uh, then we'll go through the drill. All right, we are going to depart from runway 30 at Mason City. Any anomaly before gear retraction, we retard the throttles and land straight ahead. If we have a problem after the gear is up, we uh, go through the drill, which is pitch for blue line, mixture, props, throttle, flaps up, gear, move it to, no. up, gear up, identify, verify, feather, mixture, and then check this when we have the time. Okay. And then we're taking off. All right, we're taking the runway power to 25 inches. Airspeed is alive. Pressures and temperatures look good. Red line plus 10. Rotate. Accelerate. Boom. Mixtures. Propellers. Throttles. Flaps up. Gear up. And that's why we do gear up every time, because you forgot to retract the gear after takeoff. I did. And so anybody that tells you to skip the gear, sooner or later they'll get caught. And yep. that's a perfect example of why. Absolutely, yep. Yeah. Let me start over. We're taking the runway power to 25 inches. Air speed's alive, pressures and temperatures good. Red line plus 10, rotate, positive rate, gear comes up, we accelerate, boom. boom. Mixture, prop, throttle, flaps up, gear up, identify, verify, feather, mixture and then the checklist very good let's go flying let's be alive which is precious good five inches bed plus 10 positive rate gear up okay you feel pretty comfortable in the airplane it looks like it yep feels just like home right so far yeah yeah okay Something tells me that will change. So, yeah. <laughs> Good clue. So if we were flying along at altitude and all at once an engine started to run rough, we might take time to diagnose. We might look at our fuel pressure, um, fuel flow, we've got fuel flow, oil pressure. Everything doesn't work, but when we ultimately decide, you know what, that engine's not running, we're going to have to shut it down. I believe the best way to shut it down is to go back to what we know and we've trained, and that's the drill. Right. So boom, for whatever reason, we have decided to shut down the left engine. Okay. So we're going to execute the drill, so let's do that. All right, so if then your margin above the blue line. You're at the pitch for blue line. We're level, right? Level, at, yep. Yep, okay. So, extras, pillars. Bottle, just a good one. Or? Yep. Laps are up. Gears up. I'm pushing right rudder, so the left identified. Verified. Okay. Feather. Yeah. All the way. Yeah. And mixture. And check this. Okay, so now and the prop is half a ball. Yaw string straight back. And to blue line. Well, if you're a blue line, you're gonna be climbing a thousand feet a minute. Oh, well, so this is good, right? Yeah, this is good. An airplane flies. We'll get rid of that gear horn. The airplane flies just fine, right? Yeah, it really does. You could shoot an ILS with this airplane, right? That's I all we gotta that. do. Okay. I think that will be good. All right, restart checklist. Uh, fuel on. 
down there, turn it to on, which is straight forward. Uh, throttle, quarter inch, uh, mixture, rich. Fuel pump on low. And crank. And crank. on one engine. I had a lot of fun flying the Baron with Doug. And as you can imagine, there's more to twin engine flying than shutting down an engine. And the next video will cover what may be the most important and most critical concept of multi-engine flying, minimum control speed of VMC. And for those of you with a strong interest in multi-engine flying, as a special treat I have a full-length recording of my ground school session with Doug available here. As always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube and subscribe to my channel by clicking here. See you next time.